So I got myself a binder and as promised I'm carefully reviewing each page of the hundred pages written so far on TopWiki's business plan slash 500 page book and for fun I'm always yapping about stuff um, you know whether I'm wandering around the empty classrooms of Sohi and Suhan in the jungle school you know you have to take a apps jungle safari to get to their school and spending weeks there and just sitting in their empty classroom and their rundown shack that they call a school and thinking about like what are they learning and how does it relate to my phd education and how does it relate to everything i've seen at the science center in bangkok thailand or the science center in seattle washington or the science centers i've been to in kuala lumpur malaysia or looking at the ziggurat in iraq and the great pyramids of giza in egypt and wandering around europe and the top part of south america and you know just taking all my life experiences and thinking um, about being a scientist and, and how can I create a universal, ubiquitous educational product that would be more valuable to humanity than, top Wiki, than WikiLeaks and Wikipedia combined, but building off of what they've done such that if they didn't already exist, TopWiki couldn't exist. So. TopWiki is not just a celebration of Wikipedia and WikiLeaks. It's necessary for them to exist, for TopWiki to exist. And although it's inherently extremely offensive to say, it's just true. Scientists tend to be the smartest people on planet Earth. And as scientists get older, I've noticed they start to become extremely humble. And if you're like me and you've almost died multiple times in war and you've been raped and you've been beat and you've been molested and you've been kicked and spit on and jailed and stayed at the Salvation Army and put in hospitals and you can't help but be tougher than everyone else and simultaneously more humble than everyone else if you, you know, if you come out the other side without too much emotional damage. And so the thing that I agree on with all the other scientists in the world basically is that it's very important that we use TOE as an acronym theory of everything because as scientists when we start to get older and we're like oh man we're gonna die and what does all our lives work really amounted to and does it even matter the first thing we do is think we got a power of suggestion the next generation to take our work to the next level and so I've thought about the acronym TOE hundreds if not thousands of times and I thought yeah it is it is absolutely perfect it's the most perfect power of suggestion thingy that we could come up with as a scientific community because it touch it power of suggests people to think oh theory of everything TOE theory of evolution theory of epidemiology theory of energy theory of emergence and how they all work together um Again, it's not the perfect acronym, it's just the perfect acronym in terms of like a global scientific consensus. And um, yeah, so it's very important for me to learn Khmer and it's very important to me to be brutally, brutally, brutally honest with myself. Like starting with English as my native tongue, it'll take me roughly 2,200 hours, six or seven years to fully master Khmer or be at an intermediate level. And so this is page one, page two, page three. And just like in Russian culture, they're absolutely obsessed with the preservation of knowledge because they look to like the Library of Alexandria where I visited in Egypt that got burnt down. And there's this, there's this feeling that the steam engine, which was invented by, let's say, the hero of Alexandria, um, you know, it would have been invented again in another 50 or maybe 60 years, not 1,300 years later it was invented a second time. So that's played a big impact on my psychology too. The Russian culture is just all in all out obsession with the preservation of knowledge. Like, And I've come up with my own 20, 30, 40, 50 solutions to how do we preserve human knowledge over time so we don't have libraries burning down. 